All right guys, so I just finished up the first day of anatomy at uh, med school, so first year med student, and I thought I'd share what it was like. I think a little disclaimer here is it might get a little graphic. I'm not gonna show any pictures, but I'm just gonna talk about it. Um, and so this was my first time ever dissecting a human body. And, um, you know, I've done dissections in the past. I took a zoology class in college, we dissected cats. And um, so I'll have a little bit of background I can kind of relate it to if you've done any of that stuff. But um, yeah, I'd say, you know, there's about 150 kids in total in my class. And so there's a bunch of groups of four and about 30 bodies uh, or cadavers. And, um, you know, prior to everyone showing up, you're supposed to have your a lab coat on, not your white coat, that's for like the fancy stuff for greeting patients, but you have a lab coat on that, you know, your shirt can get ruined. Um, and you've got, uh, you know, your goggles on, you've got, in our case, we're using a double face mask because of COVID and the Delta variant right now, but you know, you're all masked up, you've got your gown, um, and basically underneath your gown, you've got uh, any kind of clothes that you're okay losing because they will get they will smell really bad because the formaldehyde can smell or reek. Um, and in my case, it really burned my eyes a lot. Um, I wasn't wearing the goggles that seal. I was just wearing some goggles and just the, the fumes from that is enough to kind of really just burn your eyes. And so, if, you know, that some people might feel a little bit lightheaded too. Um, and fortunately, you know, nobody fainted today, but it can happen. It has happened. Uh, but yeah, so basically, uh, everyone was kind of anxious today. I think most most medical students, first year students, believe it or not, haven't had much dissection experience, not even cats. Um, so I had a small leg up. Um, and then there's some people who obviously have done a bunch of physiology or dissections in the past. So it's kind of a mixed bunch, but I'd say easily 80% of the people there had no prior dissecting experience. And um, so like, if you haven't and you're applying to med school or you're already in med school, like don't, I don't feel bad if you're like, oh my God, I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing here because a lot of other people don't too. Um, but yeah, so basically we were all just waiting and uh, it was pretty, uh, it was very interesting to kind of just be in these huge rooms and to uh, see all these other students who were like going in and definitely I think, you know, a lot of people were pretty anxious and nervous and, um, you know, the, the cadavers themselves uh, are people and they've been extremely grateful or gracious to us and, and, and to, you know, medical students and the school by letting us, uh, you know, do these types of things. So a huge emphasis placed on just being respectful of the people. And so I'm not gonna share any personally identified information and you treat the bodies with respect. And the other thing is that, you know, people who have donated their bodies for these purposes of being cadavers in medical schools um after the year they give the bodies back um and so all the tissues that come off like the skin and muscles and whatever other things that, that the students take off it gets collected into uh, a container for that specific person and then um, they cremate it and then they hold a ceremony at the end of the year so um, that's stuff that I, I didn't know that I would tell people who are interested in learning more about this is that like if you are one of those people who want to donate your body, it's just temporarily, you know, in the uh, uh, ownership of the school while they're doing their anatomy sessions and then afterwards uh, they give the bodies back to the families and so um, yeah, if, if anyone's interested in doing that kind of stuff or knows someone, uh, I would let them know. But basically, yeah, so walked into these huge rooms and it was very kind of, uh, I'd say it was very interesting at first because every single cadaver had a white piece of plastic on top and they also were using, uh, I think it's called like cheese wrap or something. It's the, literally the whole point of these things is to try to make sure that the formaldehyde stays in its liquid form on the tissues and in the body so that it can continue to preserve the bodies because if you leave a cadaver out uncovered for too long, you know, it'll lose all of that fluid and, um, you know, it, it, we, we really don't wanna lose a body like that. So, uh, 
it's very important that basically everything stays moist and um, in terms of blood, there's not much blood because I think most of the blood's been drained. Um, and also in terms of like me and my personal history, like, you know, I, I'll be honest, like it basically, it's not as bad I think as people think because these, these people after they've died and they've been embalmed, I, uh, I think is the phrase or basically just use a bunch of embalming fluid or uh, formaldehyde they kind of it's it's a lot different from like what a human what a living human being is like um you know the the skin is a lot different it's a lot uh tougher and it doesn't move around as well as it does you know on a living person so everything's just kind of like you know and then the muscles are rigid and there's a lot of the tissues that are usually kind of soft like you know maybe the palm of your hand or like you know around your butt like it's none of that it's all very kind of just everything's cold and hard and um so in terms of like what is it like to 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 get into it so it's like you know you, you unroll the plastic main tarp and you take off the cloths and um and then you use scalpels and so they literally have to teach us today how to use a scalpel like how to take the blade on and off and you bet there's a bunch of people who end up cutting themselves because uh, you don't know how to do it right, but basically that's a skill that uh, other people can show you how to do pretty quick and you just practice it and you be really careful um, and then actually getting down into cutting through the skin and uh, I think one of the biggest things people who are new to dissections, especially like today, don't necessarily understand is that it's like you have to be really careful to not cut too deep because you know if you just stuck the scalpel blade in you're gonna start cutting through into the muscles and um, through nerves and stuff that we are trying to preserve so we can look at the structures and stuff. So um, that's, you know, uh, so there's there's better techniques than others. The, the best way to start is to just start with a very, very shallow cut and um, to basically just use the scalpel blade gently and to also, uh, use these forceps. They have these things called rat teeth on them. They look, they grab like that. So it grabs a little bit in, so it, it really holds it well. So you basically make a small, small superficial cut uh, through the dermis, the epidermis, and then you kind of try to pull on the skin to get it to separate. And th this is dead tissue, so it's different from living tissue. But basically, you know, a big challenging part of this is literally just separating that skin and pulling it away from uh, the under parts. And so you've got a lot of fascia, the connective tissue that's pretty, it's like elastic and it'll, and it, it really kind of pulls the skin onto the muscles. So it's like, you gotta pull pretty hard and then you run your scalpel blade through to kind of try to trim off the bits as they come off. So you basically are using your um, forceps to pull on a little edge and then you come in with your other hand with the scalpel blade and you just keep working it away from the surface and you just keep pulling it and it's basically uh something that just takes practice to do and um yeah so it's pretty pretty straightforward um and it, it wasn't bad it, and every patient or every cadaver is different they were a different human being with a different history and a different you know cause of death so you know some of these people you know find tumors in them some of them are much more obese than others um, and so, uh, you know, different ages as well and genders and ethnicities. So you get a huge variety. It's kind of one of the cool things about, you know, in a, being in a larger school is that you get to see the variety in people. And that's part of the reason why I think anatomy, even though it's not officially required for medical school anymore, is something that is valuable because you are forced to see the variety of human beings um, through dissections. Um, so it's not just the perfect 3D model of, you know, what does a kidney always look like? And what does a liver always look like? And what is this muscle always supposed to look like? Like you can see how much people atrophy, like in our case, um, the cadaver that my group was working on was an elderly gentleman who, uh, you know, these people just thinking about it intuitively, like if you're in a chair all day, a lot of the muscles are going to atrophy because, you're not being used. So, um, you know, a lot of this stuff, it makes the dissection a lot different. Muscle fibers that would usually be, you know, pretty thick are actually a lot thinner just because, 
you know, the fact that people have been sitting in chairs all day and you can also see like how much they've been eating or how little they've been eating by how much fat there is. And so, you know, some uh, cadavers that were more obese than others uh, were much easier to separate skin on because that fat really just kind of comes right off and separates easily. Whereas the people who were skinnier and didn't have as much fat or subcutaneous fat, basically it's much harder to, to get that separation between the skin and the muscles because basically, you know, it's it's that uh, fascia immediately after you take the skin off. And um, a lot of times, sometimes you can pull too hard and the muscle will come up too. So you gotta be really careful, like kind of bring the muscle back down as you're getting the skin off. And so, um, yeah, a lot of this stuff, honestly, um, the cat was a harder dissection than the human because everything was smaller and more complicated than the cat because cats actually have more muscles than uh, human beings. So, uh, you know, it's just, yeah, so um, it was pretty straightforward, and, and you you things are bigger, so like you can literally just grab skin and kind of once you get enough of it, it's kind of like pulling a bandaid off. You're literally just pulling it, and it comes off fairly easily. Um, and in terms of like uh, you know just kind of dealing with formaldehyde, inhaling a bunch of it, uh, not probably not the best thing for your health. Uh, and so it's important to take breaks and to, you know, just stay cool if you need to take time to just, you know, you don't, no one's forcing you to like get through it fast or anything. Like it's just like be cool. And, um, you know, there's other parts of the body where things can get a lot trickier because of, you know, the, the varying thickness of the skin and, you know, the varying strength of the fascia and, um, yeah, so it's it's it was definitely a pretty cool experience. Um, today's also my twenty fifth birthday, so um, it's it's a, I don't know. I think it's I think it's pretty fun, um, but yeah, it's it's like I, uh, I think it's definitely something that that separates a lot of the health professions apart from other professions. So it's kind of like in my brain thinking about like parallel universes where I was doing some other discipline right now it's like yeah you, you wouldn't be doing any of this stuff so this is kind of something that's unique to to medicine and to health is like to really kind of look at this stuff take it apart and um i think it, hopefully it helps people understand or appreciate more like what they're memorizing and like and another thing i was thinking about the other day was just like you know basically when you are dissecting a human body for the first time it's like you're the greeks because like the greeks were the first people to do this and to like really uh, to my knowledge, it could have been other groups prior, but basically it's like the Greeks were the first people to go through this and to label things and to write their textbooks and to write notes about it. So it's kind of like, I felt like, you know, one of the Greeks in those early days who was just like, and we'll call this the Latissimus dorsi and we'll call this the trapezius and we'll call this the delta. Like, you know, it's it's pretty cool to see all of it. Um, and so, yeah, um, no one to make this video too long, but, uh, pretty fun honestly um i don't think anyone was having a bad time uh and again huge thanks to all of the people who donate their bodies and their families who've also allowed them to donate their bodies to the school and to all medical schools and to you know any school because i think it's 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 a great experience to really help people understand more about the variety of human beings and you know what causes diseases and it's it's a really important learning tool that I think um, is unfortunately being lost because there is pressure from people to not you know do anatomy anymore or to not do the real anatomy anymore they do like the 3d stuff so you can but you're definitely losing a lot of the education by doing that um, so I'm gonna wrap things up with that um, thank you all for watching and I will talk to you guys next time